Hi, first graders, is Ms. Vanderhoff. Um, so this week we have been learning in math all about graphing. Um, on the first day, on Tuesday, we made object graphs, and yesterday we made picture graphs. I hope you guys tried out making some picture graphs. And also another thing is that there's some activities on Wixie you can make picture graphs in too. So I hope you, if you didn't check that out yesterday, I hope you try it out today. And today we're gonna be doing collecting data and using a tally chart. So here's our learning target for today. By the end of today, I will be able to understand information in a tally chart and collect my own data using a tally chart. So we're going to see what tally charts are. We'll collect data a couple different ways. We'll also make something called a survey, and you'll have a chance to make your own and maybe ask some of your friends and families a question, and then make a tally chart to show what their answers are. So I'm going to switch over to the camera to show you my tally chart. Just a second. Okay. All right, so you see some paper here. Now, the tally chart I'm going to make first, sometimes you can make a tally chart based on what you observe, what you see. And so I've been going for walks every day in the woods, and I've been seeing a lot of different animals. And so on my walk the other day, I actually made a little map of all the different animals I saw along my path. And so I'm going to make a tally chart to show you all the animals I saw. I wish I could take the camera outside and show you myself, but, but uh, we'll have to do a recreation on a piece of paper. So first, I'm going to make a title. So I'm going to say animals on my walk. Maybe. Animals on my walk. And then um, I saw three different types of animals. So I saw some squirrels. I saw some birds, and I saw some turtles, because there's also a lake there, and sometimes there's turtles. And I like to use some lines, and I'll make a box around it, just to keep everything nice and lined up. All right, so this is the beginnings of my tally chart. And then I made a little picture of the walk that I took. So you guys are going to kind of go on an imaginary walk with me and see the animals. And as I see an animal, I'm going to put a mark next to that animal's name. It's called a tally mark. All right, so I'm going to scoot this down. So here, here's me going for my walk. And I'm walking along the path. And suddenly I came across my first animal. I saw a squirrel first. So on my tally chart, Next to squirrels, I'm going to make one tally mark. It's just a line going up and down like that. Then I continued on my walk down the path. Nothing yet. Until then I saw my second animal. I saw a bird. So now, under birds, I'm going to put tally mark there. Then my walk continued down the path until I saw up in this tree, do you see what I see? Another squirrel. So back in the squirrel section, I'm gonna put a second tally mark right next to the first one. Then my walk continues on this way, and then, oh, a bird flying to that tree. So I'm gonna put now, oh wow, squirrels and birds are even right now, they both have two. All right, so we continue on the path. Oh, there's my next animal. Do you guys see it? Another squirrel. There's a lot of squirrels in the woods by my house. And then I'm getting really close to the lake. So you know what we're about to see? Here's the edge of the lake, and there is our first turtle. So under turtles, I'll put my first tally mark. And then we continue down the path. And then, oh, I see a lot of animals here. So I see another turtle in the lake and down here oh look check that out it looks like there's two squirrels that one's chasing that one up the tree so since i see two squirrels right there you know what i'm going to do so here's the first one and then oh i wonder if you guys are thinking what i'm going to do next after the fourth tally mark do you guys know what the fifth one's going to look like it's not going to be another up and down line 
the fifth one is actually going to be a cross like that. Who knew that that's how we do our fifth tally mark? So that cross means five. So now this group is a five. All right, then I'm seeing continue on the path and oh, look at that. Two turtles on that log. So I'm going to put two more tally marks next to turtles. And then that is the end of my walk. So here are all the animals I saw on my walk. So it looks like I had five squirrels, two birds, and four turtles. And then just like we do with our graphs, we can make we can um, make some uh, make some statements about what we noticed. So I noticed that the num the animal that I saw the most was squirrels. The animal I saw the least was birds. Um, I saw two more turtles than I saw birds. All different statements we can make based on our tally chart. Now there's another way we can make charts too. So that was based on something that I saw. That's like an observation. But then another type of tally chart we can make is writing a survey question. So a survey is just like a, a question that you ask a bunch of people and then you get their answers and you write their answers down in a tally chart. So um, I went around and asked people in my family and my friends what um, a yes or no question. I said, do you like pickles? Yes or no. So here's my question. So the title, do you like pickles? And so you saw on the animals, we had three different options, squirrels, birds, and turtles. But do you like pickles? That just has two options, either yes or no. So I have some people are going to say yes. Some people are going to say no. And then I went around and I have results or data. We call it data when we collect this kind of information. So I have data from 12 different people, including myself. So first, my answer, do I like pickles? I actually do not like pickles. So I said no. And then I asked um, my roommate, Joe, who I live with, I asked him and he said yes. So I'm going to put a tally mark for yes. And then I asked some of my family members. Hold on, let me get the results from that. So, I texted my family, my mom and my brother and sister, and here is what they said. So, first my brother said, yes, he likes pickles. So I'm gonna put a second tally mark for yes. And then my mom said she also likes pickles. She said yes. And then my sister also said, yes, wow, I'm the only person in my family who does not like pickles. And then I said, well, I need to ask people. So you know what I did? I went and texted some of our teachers to see what they would say. So I talked to Ms. Fraser, and you know what she said? She said, yes, Ms. Fraser likes pickles. So let's see, I have one, two, three, four, uh-oh. Am I going to make another up and down line? This one's going to be a cross. Ms. Fraser is the fifth person who likes pickles. So all the fives are across. And then I asked Mr. Vitali, and he said yes. And I asked Ms. Sheik, and she said yes. Wow, I am surprised that all these people like pickles. I'm the only no so far. And then I asked Mrs. Tamargo, and she said yes. And I asked Miss Ahmed, and she said no. Thank you, Ahmed. She does not like pickles, just like me. And I asked Miss Lennon, and she also said no. Thank you, Miss Lennon. And then I asked Miss Johnson, and she said yes, she likes pickles. So now, let's see, five. So now I have all 12 other responses about pickles. So now we can see what are you noticing about what my family and all the teachers that we know at Hunt Valley, what do we feel about pickles? Do most people like pickles or do most people not like pickles? It looks like most people like pickles. Let's see how many. So when I'm counting my tallies, I don't need to count each individual one here because you know what? This line here means that that's five. So I can just say that's five and then count on. Six, seven, eight, nine. 
There are nine people who said yes, and only one, two, three people that said no. Oh, I was surprised about that. I'm surprised that there's so many people who like pickles. Now, I asked one more question to all of those people. And the next question that I asked is, what is your favorite season? So there's four different seasons, so there's going to be four different options for this one. So let me write my title first. All right, there we go. What is your favorite season? And then I'm going to write the seasons. So I'll do winter, spring, summer, fall. And I like, just like in my picture graphs yesterday, I like to make it in a nice box just to make sure everything lines up really nicely. All right, so I asked those same people what their favorite season was. Now my first, I'm going to ask myself my favorite season. My favorite season is fall. So I'm going to put one time mark for fall. And then I went and I asked Joe, who lives in my house, and he said his favorite is winter. So I'm going to put one tally mark for winter. And then I asked my family. So my mom said summer is her favorite. And then my brother said fall is his favorite, just like me. And my sister said she also likes fall. And then I also asked all of our favorite teachers. So Ms. Fraser says she likes the fall. So let me check. One, two, three, four. Oh, we know what the next fall one's going to be. It's going to be a cross. And Mr. Vitali says he likes spring. First spring. Um, Miss she, she likes fall. Oh, so we know, we know what we need to do, right? One, two, three, four. Number five is a cross. That's Miss Sheik likes fall. Miss Tamargo says she likes summer. Miss Ahmed says she likes spring. Miss Ledin says she likes fall. And Miss Johnson says she likes fall. So take a look and let me make sure. Yeah, that's all 12. So we have 12 different answers here from people in my family and some of our teachers. What are you noticing about everyone's favorite season? Are you noticing which season is the favorite? It looks like the most people like fall. Let's see how many people like fall. So again, I don't need to count each individual one here. I can just say five and then count on. Five, six, seven. So seven people out of 12 voted for fall. And how many people voted, or which season was the least favorite? Looks like only one person picked winter. So just one for winter. And then, oh, do you see a season that has an equal number of votes? It looks like spring and summer both had an equal number. They both have two. Now there's one more thing we're going to do together with this data that we collected, this information. So I went around and got all this information and collected it into my tally chart. And one more thing we could do with it is actually turn this tally chart into a picture graph, like the picture graphs we made yesterday. So I can actually make a graph for favorite seasons and use the information that I collected to make my graph. So I'll make my title first. What, or, yeah, what is your favorite season? And then it's going to be a horizontal bar graph. And then I'll put the seasons. Winter. Um, spring, summer, and fall. Now this is going to be a picture graph. So that means that I'm going to draw pictures to represent each vote. So I'm thinking maybe for winter, I'll draw like a snowflake for the winter, or maybe a snowman that might be easier to draw. So my picture for winter, I had 
one vote for winter. So I'm going to draw one snowman. Okay, so there's one vote for winter. And then spring, how many votes do we have for spring? We got two votes for spring. So maybe I'll do a flower for spring. So I'm going to draw two flowers. One. And I can even, you know, since I'm making a picture graph, add some color to it. So I'll make my petals, give them some pink. And maybe I'll do a little yellow in the middle. Just to add a little color. And then summer. Summer had two votes. And for summer, maybe I'll, I'll make a big button because the sun is so bright and hot during the summer. Um, and just like we learned with our other types of graphs, I want to try to make everything about the same size and take up the same amount of space. In fact, even if I wanted to draw these lines to help me make sure it takes up the same amount of space, and I'll make my sons know. And I got to make sure I have enough space for my biggest one, fall, which had seven votes. So one, two, three, four. This will have a little extra. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we'll have an open spot. All right, so for fall, we had seven votes, and maybe I'll do a leaf for fall. So I'll draw. I'll give those leaves a little color. Maybe I'll make them red because that's a fall leaf color. All right, so here is a picture graph we created that uses the data that we collected. And I collect that data by asking people that I know. I ask them my question. And the question that I asked when I did my pickles, I had two different options, yes or no. When I did the favorite season, I had four options. Now you can do this as well. You can make up a question. It could be a question that has two options. It could be like a yes or no question, like my pickles question. Maybe do you like and pick something else that you want to ask people if they like it, yes or no. Or you can ask a question that has a couple options, like this one, like what is your favorite season, it has four options. Um, I don't want you to do any more than four options. Four is a good number, so four or less. But you could ask questions of your and friends, like what's your favorite color, and pick four options. What's your favorite sport? Um, what's your favorite food? What's your favorite ice cream flavor? So any kind of question like that that you want to ask, and then give a couple of options, and then you can ask. I did it by texting my family and friends. You could do it by calling your, your friends that don't live with with you. You can ask the family members who live in your house. Um, and so you can make a tally chart about it and then you can also turn that tally chart into a picture graph if you want. Now one more thing I want to show you is that um, I told you at the beginning of our lesson today about Wixie. So I also have a new Wixie that you can try out today that involves coming up with one of these survey questions and then asking people, making your own tally chart, and then turning it into a picture graph. So I'll show you what it looks like. Um, okay, so here, here is what today's Wixie is going to look like. So it says, come up with a yes or no survey question, ask at least 10 people, and collect the da your data in a tally chart on paper, Write a title for your graph. So do you see where it says add text here? On your version, you're going to be able to click in that and type a title for it. So maybe type whatever question you asked. So mine was, do you like pickles? So if this was my graph, I'd type, do you like pickles? But you're going to make it whatever your question is. 
And then you're going to use the smiley faces to make a picture graph of your results. So after you ask 10 people, then you can right click on these pictures and it's going to let you click duplicate and then you can make extras and fill in for how many people said yes with a smiley face and how many people said no with the frowny face. So I hope you try that out. Your teacher will be able to see it on Wixie. Um, you can also always make your own on paper if you'd like to and take a picture of it, email it to your teacher. Also, you know your teachers, we're all going to have office hour times, and so you can always bring your paper to office hour time and hold it up and show it to us. We'd love to see it. So um, I hope you have had some fun learning some graphs this week, and I hope you try making your own, asking some survey questions, making a tally chart, and making a graph about it. I will see you guys next week. Bye.